Facebook is culturally appropriating, Ethereum is ultra scalable, and the ultimate guide to airdrops. All this and more on... I'm Luke and this is TLDR, where we catch you up on all the headlines and important narratives from around Bengals this week. As always, there are going to be links down in the show notes so you can do a deeper dive into any of these topics. So before we start, I want to shout out our sponsor, Pool Together V4. Pool Together is a no-loss lottery where you can deposit assets, check out the daily reward drawings, and remove your funds at any time. It's now on Polygon so you can dive into the pool with minimal gas costs. Learn more at bankless.cc slash pool together. So the markets have been insane this week with Ethereum hitting a new all-time high at over $4,400. Shiba Inu actually flipped Dogecoin in terms of total market cap. And Shiba is built on Ethereum. It's an ERC20 token. And I'm pretty like meh on meme coins like this. They don't do anything except like attract value and speculation, but also they don't claim to do anything except that. They're kind of fun. $40 $40 billion worth of fun. But maybe on the more earned side of things, the more justified side of things, Ethereum has had an explosive year, growing tremendously. NFTs, uh, value locked in DeFi, EIP-1559, the merge on the horizon. My boy Ben covers it all in the state of Ethereum. And by the numbers, the growth is impressive. Uh, if you've been watching Bankless though, the growth should be unsurprising. And don't be surprised as this growth continues. It's also maybe not a coincidence that Ethereum hit new all-time highs immediately after this article dropped. Also, Zuck announced that he's changing the name of Facebook to Meta, which I loathe. Uh, But what's really going on here? Facebook is seeing the writing on the wall. It's a boomer platform and they need to get with the times. And the trends are towards the metaverse, where you're blurring the pixels between economics and culture. It's happening, but on whose terms? Facebook, a company that answers to shareholders and wants to extract value from its users, or a decentralized platform that aligns incentives between the network and its citizens. Our podcast with Eric Peters this week covered this topic more broadly. Eric is the founder and CEO of One River Asset Management, uh, and they bought $600 million worth of Ether and Bitcoin last year. And Eric's takes were somewhat surprising for someone I generally characterize to be more of a traditional hedge fund manager. Eric sees quantum level change on the horizon, change that affects things at a fundamental level for society. What? are the sorts of shifts that we should expect given this monetary to fiscal policy uh, regime change. If it were only that regime change or that paradigm shift that, that were affecting us, it would, it would be the biggest one that we've seen, uh, certainly in my career, um, spending over 30 years. But it's not because it, everything I just said is happening with the backdrop of blockchain technology on the cusp of rewiring the global financial system and spinning out of that project are a variety of assets, cryptocurrencies that, uh, you know, or various tokens that I think represent fundamental change in, in probably how the whole world operates that will take decades to manifest. But in the here and now, it's affecting financial markets and investment opportunities, et cetera. What you can try to do is, I think, understand what are the biggest, most important things that are happening and then kind of understand how they interact and then stay mentally flexible around, well, what are some of the things that those could mean? And then then you're supposed to kind of look at markets and say, well, what are markets telling you some of this stuff means? And, you know, and then ideally invest alongside those trends as they emerge. This means a reframing of power dynamics, a a reassessment of capitalism and socialism, and a move towards a digital first society. Is it going to be America's corporations or China's one party government or a decentralized set of networks that will lead this charge? Maybe it's whichever one can really scale out first. After all, I think that all of this, this whole society game thing, boils down to memes and capital efficiency. The winners have the best combination of both, both memes and capital efficiency. Uh, And I think it actually like boils down further uh, to just user experience. People are going to go where the best user experience is. It's only rational. So the new meme is ultra scalable Ethereum and the new capital efficiency is modular blockchains. 
Polynaya dropped a bunch of articles and tweet threads laying out many of these ideas, and they've been really stuck in my head lately. Modular blockchains separate out the main things that a blockchain does, so that's consensus, data availability, and execution. And instead of having this all on one platform, one layer one, you can actually split things up and specialize them. And specialization breeds efficiency. So with ultra-scalable Ethereum, you have consensus happening on the beacon chain, data availability happening among the shards, and execution happening on layer two on rollups. Each of these things are optimized for their particular task and what you get back is a positive feedback loop where things are aligned to increase the robustness and throughput of the network. If this is a lot, or actually either way, just watch the State of the Nation we did this week and or read the article David dropped on it. It's good stuff. And if that's still a lot, just know that the meme is ultra scalable Ethereum and the capital efficiency is modular blockchains. We also dropped the ultimate guide to airdrops this week. So many protocols give out airdrops to early adopters of their product, and we have identified 25 likely candidates for future airdrops. Uh, the first five are open to everyone. These are Element, Hot Protocol, DeFi Saver, Ondo, and Saddle. The specifics of the strategies to get involved are detailed in the article, and the rest are available to you if you're a premium subscriber. The general idea, though, is to use these newer protocols, try them out, learn about them, and you may get rewarded for it, but who knows? Not me. Not financial advice. Never is. Nothing is certain except death and unrealized capital gains taxes. So Cami Russo came on Layer Zero this week, and she's the founder and champion of The Defiant, and The Defiant is easily, easily my second favorite crypto media company. And they've been doing like awesome stuff for a while now and their growth is really, really cool to see. Cami and David talk about what it's like getting involved in this world and building out startup-y media companies. And I think both have embraced new ways of publishing media that is overall better than the lagging traditional media. So our editorial point of view is that DeFi is the future. You know, like we, we believe in Web3, we believe the world will be increasingly decentralized. Uh, we believe DeFi will become finance. Mm -hmm. But um, how that happens, on what chain, you know, who wins, whatever, like all of that, we leave it to our readers to do. Our job is to report on this space objectively. I am super impressed by Cami's story, uh, coming from Chile and living all over the world, doing fascinating journalism on a variety of topics. And remember memes and capital efficiency? Well, The Defiant is making powerful memes through the form of informed journalism and quality narratives. And storytelling is what really drives the way that we see the world. We also hosted a fantastic Ethereum vs. Bitcoin debate with David and Justin Drake on the Ethereum side and Dennis Porter and Munib Ali on the Bitcoin side. And I really liked this episode. It was refreshing to hear a thoughtful dialogue without all of the maximalist shouting and shaming that you see on Twitter all the time. Uh, I thought both sides made excellent points and throughout the conversation, I feel like my views on money, soundness, security, scalability, they were all sharpened. Uh, my biggest takeaway is that these communities, when you zoom out for a second, are really aligned. The gap between Bitcoiners and Ethereans is much larger than what's, uh, is perceived to be much larger than what's actually true. Uh, I actually, I, I joke with Eric Connor a lot that, you know, Ethereans and Bitcoiners, they actually value, have the same values. They just believe in fundamentally different executions. Um, we believe in the immutability of money. We believe in decentralized, the world of decentralizing finance away from uh, the powers that be into the hands of the people. And it's really more about the execution, about how we actually get that done. Uh, and so while there appears to be many, many differences between these two camps, uh, I think we all have to be reminded that um, we're all in the same industry. We're fighting for very similar things and at least we're not a centralized blockchain. And what ends up being a pretty broad rift in culture is really just a few technical and ideological differences about monetary policy. It's easy to get caught up in Twitter drama, picking a side and yelling at perceived opponents, but I think it's a good idea to collaborate rather than compete wherever possible. The broad mission is the same. Bring a non-sovereign store of value to the world and upgrade the protocols that our society is built on top of. So with that, I want to shout out our sponsors, Matcha, Alchemix, Ledger, and Arbitrum. These projects are upgrading our society's protocols, and also this video wouldn't be possible without them. So thanks a lot. And finally, none of this is financial advice, ETH is risky, DeFi is risky, but we are headed west. It's the frontier. It's not for everyone, but we're glad you're with us on the Bengals journey. 
See you next time. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, head over to Bankless HQ right now to develop your crypto investing skills and learn how to free yourself from banks and gain your financial independence. We recommend joining our daily newsletter, podcast, and community as a Bankless Premium subscriber to get the most out of your Bankless experience. You'll get access to our market analysis, our alpha leaks, and exclusive content, and even the Bankless token for airdrops, raffles, and unlocks. If you're interested in crypto, the Bankless community is where you want to be. Click the link in the description to become a Bankless Premium subscriber today. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for in-depth interviews with industry leaders, Ask Me Anythings, and weekly roll-ups where we summarize the week in crypto and other fantastic content. Thanks everyone for watching and being on the journey as we build out the Bankless Nation.